I'm going to ask to be invited when ready. Yeah, that's definitely in PvZ. I'm uh, much preferring doing an opening where you're getting about four Phoenix, five Phoenix off a single Stargate. Yep. Um, that gives you map control for the early parts of the game. Gives you a bit of harassment. You don't need to kill drones, but you can always find a hole in the spores and to kill a couple of drones. But if you're doing it off a single Stargate, then you have enough time to get Colossus up before you can get a third. Um, and even once Corruptors and all, if they go Mutilus, you know, you're in a safe spot. Once Corruptors start going, they're there to help tank the damage. They're not the best at tanking or dealing damage, but, you know, they are still somewhat useful in a fight. Yep. So, yeah, I always like going Phoenix against uh, Zerg in the current metagame. But going double Void Rays Hold with on. how popular Hydralis are. Yeah, with how popular Hydralis are in the current metagame, going double Void Ray, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like a very safe move to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, the UI again. Right. We're going to have a look at what reskin one does. And change the colors as well, maybe. EG Solis. I'm not on EG. Um, the EG was willing to pay me money, though. <laughs> I'd be pretty keen on being on EG. I'm not going to abandon the forever boys. What I'm talking about. <laughs> no. Just get your offer. I'm like, sorry, I'm committed. But forever, forever, forever EG. Good work. Get, yeah. get that. Like change this logo to like the EG logo. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. with the infinity. <laughs> sure, you could actually make that work yeah, somehow. Yeah, you can make that into an EG logo. But like, I wouldn't because my, our logo is better. Um, well, straight up, it just is. All right. So this is a little bit different. I don't know how it's different. Uh, <laughs> it actually doesn't look that different to me. Um, so in the top right-hand corner, we have the uh, blue Protoss. He is. Alright. <laughs> IVN's Berxis. I was going to do the Darth Vader voice, but I couldn't do the Darth Vader voice because Sound Guy wasn't on it. Not good enough. He wasn't on point. God damn it, Sound Guy. <laughs> Alright, bottom left hand corner, we have the Teal Zerg. He is AV's NXZ. Now, uh, we did have the LAN last week, GGF LAN in Brisbane. and Was that in Brisbane? I thought that was like. Oh, uh, Strathmiles, of course. Oh, oh, really? About 40 minutes out of um, from where I live, a bit younger at least. Um, okay. So, Brisbane area. <laughs> yeah. um, and Bexis and NXZ both did do really well. NXZ took the finals off Fennel yep. um, to come first place, and Bexis took third place um, on the event. So, yeah, both of them having some pretty good results in the Brisbane lands. Uh, recently, as we talked about, NXZ has been doing well, but Bexis is one of the names that in the Brisbane scene where he's always been around, but he's getting a lot more like top three and top four finishes. Yeah. Like, so he's always one, been one of those players that I've respected, but he just hasn't quite posted the yeah. results yet. Like, to me, I think, I feel like he's stronger than a player like Zormenta. But I think that Zormenta's style kind of favors the scene a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. So, like, Zormenta's good at PvP. And if he hits... Don't I know it? Yeah, and if he's playing PvP, then most of his games, then yeah, sure. But he could be absolutely rubbish at PvT and get stomped by Forbes in the first round. So, it's like, it's luck of the bracket on top of the fact that he's a good player and it favors his style. Where I think is... Berksis is a really good standard player, and I think that the more tournament experience Berksis gets, the just the better all-round player he's going to be. Yeah, definitely. Now, we do have Anik Z doing something that I've been seeing a lot in the metagame lately, and personally, I don't really like it. Yeah. Oh, actually, I love playing against it, but um, it's going to work out well for him, where he's going hatch first, so no pool, getting that hatchery. Um, as a lot of people know, with the Forge Fast Expand, if you get down that Forge, you can cannon these thirds, especially in locations here. There are a lot of good places to put pylons um, to cut down the surface area that drones can get in. But NXZ did go for the Forge Fast, uh, did go for the hatch first, and in response, Bexy's doing a really nice response, went for the Nexus first, and then went for the Gateway before Forge. So a small yep. little alteration um, to what he's seeing, which I definitely like. Um, I don't particularly like his pylon placement, though, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. You see right there, I feel like it's too far back. Uh, I'm not a... Um, don't overly like this wall, but... If that's one of the way, at least it keeps a lot of this pathway open, which a yeah. lot of the time, putting a pylon there can cause units to have to go all the way around, so... I um, also like that you can put, like, a tech structure there. Yeah, like definitely. I, usu I usually like putting something there. Like a robo or a stargate or something. It's like a good, nice place to keep it hidden. Yeah, Because you can kind of snipe from everywhere. Yeah. But Bex is, I'm sure, has his own plans that he's done plenty of times yeah. with these walls. You know, um, not to say that these uh, Master Grandmaster players never mistakes in their wall, yeah. but it's a lot less common, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, 
has probably done this wall plenty of times and knows how it works. Um, and here we do we actually have rushing. yeah cannons coming down at the third. He's probably gonna lose that third, I think. Um, yeah, there's no zerglings out. Was that a third hatchery before pool? Yeah, I'm I think sure. it. Yeah, might have been a well, third. Well, the pool is only the speedlings have only just started. So. Yeah, so that would have been a third hatchery before pool. So Enix said being really greedy, and this is a punishment for it. I say I absolutely love the creep growing over cannons. Yes, it looks so good. I think that the third cannon might be a little bit overkill, yeah. but I thought I think that that's just to make sure it's actually dead. Yeah, when the first two would have uh, finished, that uh, person would have killed third, but yeah, as you're saying, just be sure that it goes down. Now well, from here, he'll want to get really defensive back home. Yeah, well, we see the Roach Warren going down. He's probably going to throw up another couple of cannons. He knows that he's ahead right now, but whether or not the 450 minerals was equal to the fact that he's going to have to defend from a Roach all in, it really depends on what we're going to see in the next few minutes. Um, he's probably going to start massing units as soon as the Roach Warren pops, which is why he's massing the Overlords now. Yeah, once That's again, this wall is very weak. Um, this one I'd say usually that he'd be fine because he knows that a all-in's coming. You know, it's what you'd expect, so you just cannon down and get really defensive behind your wall. But this wall, that's three really major weak points, and even this gateway, if you put your Roaches positioned over in this area here, we'd be able to hit that gateway and then just run straight into that base. So this wall is actually going to be really weak. Um, and Enix Z is a skillful enough player that He's he should be able to pick up yeah. in the weak season, yeah. Yeah, like this Mothership Call is pretty late as well, considering what he just did. Um, he got the Stargate before Mothership Core. If I was defending against an all-in like this, I probably would have went MC Core for the extra energy first. Um, he's not going to be able to get a Void Ray out in time, it doesn't look like it. He needs 100 more minerals for this Void Ray. And by then, the uh, he's gone Phoenix. He's gone Phoenix. <laughs> he's got to cancel that. Yeah. This cancel the Phoenix. He needs to know that some sort of all-in is coming. Um, it is what you would expect he after doing that damage. There we go. So he has cancelled it. Day. He is adding more cannons, which is oh, great. I don't, I don't really like where he's putting his cannons. He should have broken down that. Yeah. And, oh, this this could end up very bad for Berxis. He's it's looking only got like two it cannons. probably will. These cannons are very open. Zerglings will destroy that cannon uh, very quickly. He does have one force build on his sentry, soon to be two. So oh, he's, he's going to need those yeah, he's gonna to attack that help. And he's going to need the force field that before the Zerglings can get through. And the Void Ray needs to be targeting down Roaches, and there we go, oh, the Zerglings have go. dropped. It's looking like he will hold this first wave, um, and there is no second wave following it up, so he will be okay after all this. Oh, I don't I don't particularly like the position that NX sets in. Now he's behind on tech, he's behind on bases, and he's only just getting his lair. So the transition to me said it would have been Muta back in the day, but I'm not sure if he'd go Muta now that he knows that his opponent's going Stargate. Yeah, well, NXZ does have a fairly decent worker lead. He does have three bases, but this base is in a very open position. But you have to remember what we were saying before about NXZ style. Is that early game defense seems to be his extreme strong point, where I've seen so many games where uh, players of really talented players have, you know, one base for two base, um, or sometimes even three base all in him and every time he holds it without a problem. Yeah. So, as much of a worry as having a base in this position can be against a player like Enix said, um, if, it, if I was to bet anyone to defend a base like that, yeah. it would be him. So, yeah, Bexys is in a really nice spot after that. Um, he does have the tech, he does have you know, two good bases with decent pro production and all that going on, um, but Enix said definitely still in this. Oh man, those cannons, they're going to be a problem when he wants to take a fourth base. Yeah, he's going to have to commit a fair number of roaches, because it is, once again, this is one of the plus sides of getting that third cannon, so it means that a couple roaches won't be enough to break that. Yep. You need, you know, decent commitment to get through there. Um, and here we do have breaking out. Uh, great work with the Overlord to delay that third, and it's going to do exactly what it means to. Cut. <laughs> well, yeah, he knows really that it happened, and if you saw in the supply tab, he just made like 24 links. So he's ready for that third to go down, and he's ready to make it cancel. Yeah, his, uh, there goes the Hydra. Dan has been put down, so Hydras will be following this up, but not quite yet. But yeah, with the Zerglings, if you have a look at the ground forces so far, he does have enough Zerglings that if uh, Vexus tries to put down that expansion, the Zerglings will be able to cover straight away, but here we have the Zerglings cleaning up these cannons. He will lose a fair number, but mass Zerglings do do pretty well, but there we can see the kill counter. Each of those had fairly good kills, but uh, Enix said does clean it up nicely. He's got plenty of minerals to spare at this point. Put Remember that down. He's, he's setting up a nice Sim City while this creep clears. I like that, but it'll be interesting to see his cannon placement from here. Um, I honestly think that his cannon placement 
will actually depend on whether or not he's going to hold the space from the Ling Hydro aggression that's coming soon. Yeah, well, if we have a look at the ground units that uh, and it, uh, that Bexis has at the moment, we have five sentries uh, and the two zealots down here. But yeah, this wall looks like it will be down in enough time to cut down that choke. So that third base will be able to get up. But whilst he does, NXZ staying one base ahead, getting his fourth. Yeah. So I'm liking the position that both players have been in. Like, no, neither player is really behind, and it's like one poor engagement could swing the... Swing the battle in the favor of either yeah, player. Definitely. Yep. Um, now we do have this aggression coming out. We do have the yep. Spire is about to finish. So will NXZ be going for the popular uh, Mutalist switch after Hydralist, where uh, Bexis will be seeing these Hydralists coming. He'll be committing heavily to Colossus, to Colossus and um, Sentries for their force fields and all that. Whilst uh, NXZ behind it follows up with a huge amount of uh, Mutalist. Or he could just be Corruptors to come help and deal with those Colossus. Well, I think that he might actually just grab life with you. Oh no. We've got um. Uh, a message from a teammate saying that B equals D. Uh, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Now we have great sim sitting from uh, Bexis, but there is a hole in these Zerglings. We'll be able to get in to open up oh, this side and that get another Colossus game picked out. Will we'll it get past? Uh, the Zerglings are getting into the base, though, so, yeah, they will make it into the main base where there are no cannons, so a good number of Zerglings making it through. Will he push this army up or no? He just chooses to back out. He might even try and go to a third. A couple of zealots walked in to defend the main. He is making corruptors now. Line. So he's going to use the corruptors to clean up the small void ray force and. Oh, will they get caught out here? Oh, will they get snapped? He's going to target down the sentries. No more force fields. One Colossus does drop down, the other getting lower on health. The, these void rays on their overcharge just make them so effective. Yeah, chewing down those roaches, but now they're fighting Hydralis, and Hydralis can take them down cost yep. effectively. He does manage to keep that Colossus alive with 2 HP, so... Uh, Bex is doing well, keeping his units alive, but with these Corruptors coming through, uh, with the large amount of Corruptors and the roaches and lings and a couple of Hydras that are left over, uh, Bex is going to be in a bit of trouble unless he has really nice engagement. Yeah, Berx is going to need to hold on. He's probably going to need to count up one of his engagement points and just hope that it works out for him. Most of his sentries got sniped in that last engagement. He's got to invest more gas into Colossus and Void Rays than he can afford to. And, oh, now, look at this. The Corruptors have gone into one shot. And, and sniped. Oh, it'll be a three shot on the second Colossus, and that does drop. There goes the Void Rays, and with that many Zerglings and Hydralis, Berx is forced to GG That's out. NXZ versus... Uh, Berxis, and yep. that was 2-0 to NXZ. Yeah, so showing his power there. Yeah, it was two very convincing games. NXZ has brought his game today. I want to see how he does in ZVZ. Yeah, well, that's going to be um, the one that everyone's going to be looking forward to. As we finish up our uh, groups soon, we'll be moving on to the brackets yep. and keeping the eye out for the, the important players of today. Who are we looking at? We got Moonglade, obviously, is probably the f like number one favorite to win the whole thing. Yeah. We have NXZ, who's usually the Brisbane... Uh, regular for winning, so yep. I'm sure he should be able to bring some good games. As seems to be really on top of his game today, um, been fairly inactive compared to yep. you know some of the other times. Is he getting through? He's, groups? Yeah. he's number one in his group. Okay, now. yeah, so he'll be making it through. So he's looking really good today. Um, and then we have some of the normal players. I do believe Zormenta did make it out of his group. He's got his really aggressive play style. Did he have PvP at all? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't casted any of Zormenta's games today, but I assume he had PvP. That's why I got out. Yeah, so... Um, some play, players... Play Domo and stuff. All right, I can see why I got out. Yeah. Um, How do you think... Um, what's his name? Olimsky. Olimsky will do in brackets. I think Olimsky's going to have his work cut out for him in his brackets. Um, I think brackets is very... is very different to group play in this case. I think, like, he beat you, but... Again, you're not going to have to challenge into a rematch after that. Yeah, like Alimsky is the kind of guy that he'll take a win. He's he's beaten players. Take like a win from anyone, but yeah, never. Like he's beaten Sensei, Iagas. Like yeah. he's beaten big players, and he's no stranger to that. But whether or not he can do so consistently is another question. Yeah, that would be the. I think like we'll have to keep an eye out open for in the brackets. I don't think he's dedicated enough time particularly to yeah, like yeah. to StarCraft to be able to do that consistently. So I think if you rematch him, you've got a really good shot. I mean, I would say that he's worse than Eve Signs. 
Uh, who isn't here today? He's hungover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a big party tonight. He was like, um, he plays on Forever Dota. Yeah. And um, he was like, yeah, 